Today we're gonna to be making a carbide peening hammer. And the reason that is, I've got some Crooked Blades ABL stainless, which is notorious for it, and I need to get the bends out of them. Now normally I do this in the tempering phase, but this one here is really bad. And sometimes I just set them to the side. I always cut out extra anyway and deal with them later. But I wanna make a hammer and I'm gonna show you how to do it. First thing I do is prepare the hammer. I've got a small ball peen hammer. I'm gonna cut a flat face here. And I've got a 3 16 carbide rod. Now you can use the carbide balls or the rod, but I like the rod because I can sink it down further than the hammer and I like the small diameter. So let's get to it. So I'm just gonna grind a flat spot on here. That way I can center punch it and drill it. And that looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is anneal this ball. The hammer's hard, it'd be hard to drill. So I'll take a torch and I'm just gonna heat the ball up and try to keep from burning the handle. It'd be easier if I just had a hammer head and do this and not worry about burning the handle, but I think I can do it. It'll charred a little bit, but that'll be okay. I just wanna bring it up to a bright red and let it cool off. And that should work, and then I'll go and cool off this handle. So I'll just get it center punched, then I'll bring it over to the drill. I'm using a 3 16 cobalt bit here, nothing special. I've got a depth set so I can drill down to the depth to insert the carbide rod. Now I'm going to take a 3 16 end mill and just cut the bottom of the hole. So I've taken the carbide rod and I've cut a couple marks in here. Now this is hard to do. I used a cutoff wheel running, you know, high speed and it takes quite a few seconds to do that to barely get a mark in this carbide. You basically ruining wheels too. Stuff's very hard. So what I'm gonna do instead of brazing this thing in like I normally would do, and because it's a rod, I'm gonna epoxy it in. And I realize that many of you may not be able to braze, so we're gonna try the epoxy method. Now, if this were a ball, I wouldn't try the ball because it's just not enough depth. This goes down in there pretty deep, and I think the epoxy will work. We're gonna try it and see. So I've got some long cure, 30 minute cure epoxy, which I'm gonna let it cure for 24 hours. And uh, we're gonna epoxy it into the end of this ball peen, and we're gonna try it out. It definitely doesn't take this much epoxy, but got enough here to do it anyway. So, all right, that's pretty good. I'm just going to put some in here. I know it's going to push it out. I did clean everything with some acetone. And like I said, it's not going to take much epoxy. Just the pressure is, is trying to hold it back, hydraulic pressure from the epoxy. So it's gonna take a second for it to come down. See if I can squeeze it out. So I'm just gonna clean up around it a little bit. I 
It doesn't have to be fancy. We're not making a knife or a presentation piece here. All right, we're gonna let that set 24 hours and we're gonna test it out on straightening that blade. All right, it's been about 12 hours and checking the epoxy, it seems pretty good. I think we're gonna go ahead and test it out. So I've got my blade here with the bow in it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty, pretty bad. And it's right here starting right here and then bowing over this way. So the idea is to ping on the side that is bowing into, and that will push the metal out and cause the blade to straighten back up. So using this carbide, it's harder than steel. It's going to make those little indentions, and basically you're coal forging it out. Now, there is a chance you could break the blade, but it is fully tempered. And I do not see that happen. I've never had that happen. So let's find out. So I can tell from putting a straight edge up here, I've got about a 332nd bow in there, and it actually starts right here. So I'm just going to make a little mark there to know where to start peening. Now you got to keep in mind if your bow is back here in this Ricasso area, depending on the kind of blade you're working on, you, when you peen this, you're going to make those indentions and you got to get them out or you're going to have a bad looking blade there. So um, keep that in mind. If you peen them, make sure you got enough material that you can grind it out or try some other way of getting it out of there. Most of the time on any of these warps that I have, they're going to be in this area here where it starts getting thinner or narrower on the blade. All right, so the idea is to come in here and just start peening. And we can check it. And it's actually moving. Now it puts those little marks in there, but that's to be expected. They're going to grind out. That's incredible. Now, what you don't want to do is hit too close to your edge and, and damage your edge, you know, your spine, rather. Over here, not nothing to worry about. But this blade is already near about straight, just a little more peening. And that is pretty good. Take my little straight edge here. And I mean, that is beautiful. I don't know if you can see that, but it is flat as a flitter. Can't beat that. So yeah, they come out pretty straight. Works very well. Got these little marks in here, but they'll be ground out. Just keep in mind about the Ricasso area. You can mess up your blade. You might have to... Try something else there. Uh, use it in a pin press or some kind of press and, and just bend it. But I have broke many blades doing it that way. And it is no fun. Matter of fact, the development of this blade came from a broke fillet knife that I was straightening in a press, my pin press. But um, I've done a lot like that, but I've broke many blades like that, especially if they narrow. carbide peening hammer. So I thank you for watching. If you got any questions, just leave them down in the comments. I want to thank my patrons and we'll see you on the next one.